Thank you for joining us for the public meeting for FY21 through 24 Rural Transportation Improvement Program for ERAP in Somerville County. My name is Sarah Finch. I am a planner for TechStops Fort Worth District. This meeting will be recorded and feel free to use the Q&A and chat functions of the WebEx. Your questions and comments will be addressed at the conclusion of the presentation. I will now turn the presentation over to our Advanced Transportation Planning Director. Good afternoon. My name is Muhammad al Hawil. You can see my name on the slide. And I've been working for TechDot for the past 20 years. I'm the Advanced Transportation Planning Director. Let's move ahead for next slide, Sarah, very quick. This is really the agenda which we will try to cover today. We'll go through a safety minute here in a little bit. I'll have introduction to my team and, and to text that employees I have on the call today. And then the third item we have, we'll go over like overview for the rural transportation improvement program and the projects listed and the maps for Literally, what will be focused on today, this afternoon, is ERAF and Somerville County projects, but I have included the slides dealing with Jack and Palapinto County meetings, which we did have one on Tuesday for Jack County on Tuesday morning. And earlier this morning, we did have Palapinto County meetings. So if we have anybody from those areas, they can listen to the meeting and they can learn as much as others because the focus will be today on ERAF and Somerville, but the overview will be covering the same material I have covered before. Which brings me to the fourth item for the, our agenda today. We're going to discuss all the planning documents we work with at TexDOT. Right now, we are preparing the statewide transportation improvement program, and the Fort Worth District is conducting the ruler portion of that state, statewide transportation improvement program. The North Central Te Texas Council of Governments, they will be conducting the urbanized area transportation improvement program. Both of these documents will be put together by Austin in late July, and by the end of August, they will be sent to FHWA and FTA for approval. Usually they go through public involvement also with the whole document in Austin for a public hearing before sending it to FHWA. We're expecting the approval by the Fed before the end of this year on this. And by the conclusion of this meeting, like Sarah just mentioned, we are going to maybe entertain a few questions. If we have like two, three questions or comments or any requests for clarification, we will be glad to entertain those five, 10 minutes after this call. But really, really, we appreciate your comments and feedback and writing. So as you can see, we have until May the 25th is the deadline of sending comments and writings for us to be able to consider them as part of the official record for this public involvement meeting. Before I leave this agenda and the review here, and, and I'll need to go back to the first item, the safety minute. And let me just clarify here. In the past, we have conducted these public involvement meetings in person. We are able to come to the communities and meet with you all and discuss basically the, the transportation improvement program and the ruler tip portion of it. But as of this year, or as of basically this month, we're not able to go out there in person because that's that basically, as you probably know, given the unique circumstance of the COVID-19 outbreak, along with tax that commitment to protecting public health during this national emergency, TechDOT is condu conducting these public meetings. This is our third meeting today, and the last one. Like I mentioned, we did one for Jack on Tuesday, one earlier this morning for ERAS, and this meeting. So TechDOT is conducting these public meetings to avoid in-person contact. So we are doing them virtual meetings. At this time, the online format, which is this one, will be in lieu of any in-person public meeting. So yeah, while we have advertised in early March for public meetings in person, we have changed that format as of a couple of weeks ago. But before COVID-19 outbreak, virtual public involvement process has been part of the toolbox of TechDot before. 
We have conducted the technical meeting and public meetings online sometimes, but they were in support of the in-person meeting. This is the time today we are doing it in Leo of in-person meeting. Now, just to let you know that the virtual public involvement process will be supporting TechDot effort to engage the public more effectively. We're trying to make the best usage out of technology here uh, today and using this platform to inform the public and receive feedback and comment using the virtual public involvement meeting we are doing here. Uh, the process can create some efficiency. As you can see, we have invited several, uh, literally thousands of, of people via email and press releases by the district and by com the communication division. And, and, uh, and hopefully we have reached out to some people who are traditionally will not be part of the public involvement process. So part of the benefits we see for this technology Sometimes it's efficient, it's low cost to have virtual public involvement meeting. Uh, communication and collaboration can be improved. I mean, if you can reach out to more people and, and other groups who usually will not be attending traditional meetings. Uh, so expanded engagement really the, the, the goal for this. And also just, just to let you know one last thing about this, this uh, public involvement meeting, I was not able to be able to come and, and to do this because tech that as of mid-March, we have been under like stay at home order for all the employees, like myself and my team, we have been requested to work from home virtually for our offices. And unless you are a construction or a maintenance employee who, who they cannot do really their jobs without being in the field, they are the only ones who can go there. So, so in compliance with all these regulations and order in this uh, circumstance. So we are doing a virtual meeting here. So very quick here for the, the, the staff on the call. I have my team, what we call them advanced transportation planning team of TaxDot for Port District. I have Sarah Finch, the person who started the call earlier. I have uh, Joey Mims and James Lance. They are two team members of advanced transportation planning team. We do have representation from our area offices. We have area engineer David Fowler and his team, Sarah Horner, she's his assistant, and they have a design team from the area office. And we also basically have a help and support from our communication division and, and at the district level and, and, and in Austin. They helped us basically send press releases out and, and communications out regarding the virtual meeting here. So items, the item four and, and, and the fifth one here, I will move into them in a little bit, but like I said, again, for ruler tip meeting, this is the third meeting for Erath and Somerville County. If we can move to the next next slide, Sarah, so we can just get into the meeting. Okay, so this is just to start with like what we call acronyms or definitions for us here. The, the ruler transportation improvement program, like I mentioned earlier, it's one of the components of the step. So the ruler portion will be doing it for the four counties, Jack, Palabento, Iraq, Somerville, the Fort Worth district. We'll be conducting this as we are doing public involvement today, but also in the urbanized area, the North Central Texas Council of Governments will be covering the five county area we have in our district. And that tip at the COG level, and this ruler tip will be together sent to Austin by mid-July for their public, public involvement and, and forwarding to FSWA and FTA for the review and approval of the document. So again, the third bullet point there, just to let you know, this four year step, it's a short term program. It's covering fiscal year 21, which for our fiscal year 21 starts this September, and it goes through February, uh, August of 2024. So it's a four years, four fiscal years, and this document, we are estimating that this document will be approved by December or before the end of this year by FHW and FDA. Next, please. Yeah, this is now what's included in this document. What you're going to look at today in a little bit is going to be a prioritized project listing within this ERAS and Somerville County. As we know them today, they are, you can call them a draft documents 
uh, and they are going to be subject for review and comment by our local partners, our area offices, our districts, and anybody and everybody can look at them, can send us comments by the deadline, like I mentioned, by May 25th. We need to get your comments in writing. But this program usually, it's like I said, it covers rural and urban, and, and, and one key feature for it, this step document has to be consistent with the long range statewide transportation plan, has to be consistent in the urbanized area. And by the way, urbanized area is those areas of the state where we have more than 50,000 population. They are required by law to have metropolitan planning organization to be responsible for their public involvement, preparation of long-term plans and short-term programs, air quality. So we have the North Central Texas Council of Governments, which they are leading the efforts on the transportation improvement program in the urbanized area. And like I said, both documents, the urban and rural one, they are required for projects to be able to receive federal funding under Title 23 United States Code for FSWA basically, uh, FSWA projects, highway projects, and under Title 49 United States Code Chapter 53 for a transit project. Next, please. Yeah, this is where again, as you can see up there in Title basically 49, is saying each state is required to develop a statewide transportation improvement program. Now, like I said, the MPO and urbanized area will do the tip. Us will do the rural tip. The state and Austin, they will put them together and conduct public hearing on the document, send it to the Fed as, as a document. And usually, by the way, for the urbanized area, it's going to be used in the state as a reference. So the MPO and the Regional Transportation Council at the CAB, they have the authority to review and approve their MTB plan and their TIP, and then it goes to Austin. And then basically, Austin will send them as is, basically they will not modify or change what we get from urbanized areas. They will go to FHWA for reviews and, and approval and FDA also. Again, it's a four years and there is highway projects there and there is pu public transportation project included also in the document. Next, please. This is by basically Texas Administrative Code. Each district, if you have a ruler portion, like we have four counties within our district, including the, the, by the way, the ruler portion means outside the urbanized area. In those areas where we have less population than 50,000 living in those areas. So from literally zero to 50,000 or below. Above 50,000 becomes urbanized area. Uh, and the, the Fort Worth district is responsible now in conducting this process of public involvement and the, the preparation of the ruler tip in these four county areas. But it's required under Texas Administrative Code that we have to issue notices out there. We did basically announce in the newspaper, I will show you those in, in later on on the slide, when and the, the date and the timing of these announcements. We, in the last couple of weeks, we have been sending emails and press releases to prepare for virtual public involvement meetings. So we must, our policy must include basically informing the public of the availability of the proposed ruler tip meetings, basically. The place of the meeting, the location, as you know, now we are doing them virtual. In the past, we have done them in, in person. And we have to include in our policy for public involvement for ruler uh, counties, we have to include a time frame for receiving comments, when we can advertise or an, announce, uh, and all of these. Uh, if you look at the bulk point C and D there, this is basically any comments or request that public comments could name the, the proposed ruler tip be submitted in writing. So this is why I thought, and I said earlier, by May 25th, we would like to see your comments or writing on the program here. And we have to publish the notices minimum at least 10 days before the date of the meeting. Actually, in this case, we have announced in the newspaper a month before we notified the elected officials about also three to four weeks before by mailing them letters. And we did the emails about press releases and invitations for others who were interested in attending, or we have a group at TaxDot, which they have like previously attended public hearings and meetings. So the email was sent to a huge group of people to, to participate in this process. Next, please. 
this is our policy. Again, what I was reading is what's, what is required under the Texas Administrative Code. This is right now the current policy for our Fort Worth district is describing the meeting format, how we used to go out there in the community, present the information, and we used to get like 10 minutes break and then coming back, getting questions and answers and the process. So literally you can read it in your own. This is the policy. The next slide, Sarah, please. This is, this is the next one describing our invitation. Like I said before, invitation to the meeting are made through legal notice section uh, in the local newspaper at least three weeks in advance of the meetings. And also invitations for elected officials, appointed officials, mayors, and, and city managers and, and, and others basically who are representing this rural area were received uh, letters. I think we mailed about 161 letters for the four county areas. The material, we're going to orient you later on to see it. It's on the website. In the past, we used to have displays to bring with us and hand out for you, like literally project maps and the spreadsheets showing other information related to the project, which I will be able to go through in a little bit on the slides next. And, and just to clarify, I know we used to be called in the old days the highway department. And, and since the early 90s, they changed our name to Texas Department of Transportation. So we are trying to plan, design, construct, and operate a system for all users, for bicycles, for pedestrians, in compliance with ADA, American with Disabilities Act, uh, and, and, and basically, it's not only highways. It's going to be a multimodal project. So you're going to see bridge projects, railroad projects, maybe sidewalks, maybe other kind of projects we usually have. So yes, we do highways, but we do other kind of projects, other improvements to try to accommodate the rest of the users in our communities. So in the, the past several years, we have been building a lot of sidewalks, expanding uh, shoulders for streets, uh, overlays, improving pavements and, and enhancement. So all of the above, but, but we'll be able to orient you about the projects on the list. Next, please, Sarah. Okay, this is very quick. This is where our announcement for these meetings were appeared basically back almost a month ago, a little bit less than a month, because as you notice, our policy is saying between the three to four weeks before these meetings. So as you see, the earliest announcement was in April 15 for the Jacksboro Herald uh, Gazette. By the way, we have limited by when as paper because sometimes the most important one was Saturday, April 18, for mineral wells and for the the grand leader, and then for the Stephenville Empire Tribune. So April 18 was the most current for the newspaper purposes. And, and this announcement appeared in the legal portion of the newspaper in both English and Spanish languages. And like I said again, to remind you here that we have sent several emails and press releases and notification in the past two weeks when we decided to move the meeting virtually because of the, our executive director extended the stay at home for TechDot employees until the end of May. So this was two weeks ago. So we, we, we moved the meetings to, to, uh, to be basically conducted as virtual meeting as we are doing now. Next, Sarah, please. Okay, this is very quick. Majority of you probably are familiar with the, the basic, the outline of our district here, starting on the right side, we have the urbanized areas. We have five counties. We have basically Wise County, we have uh, Tarrant County, Parker County, Johnson County, and we have Hood County. This is five They are located within the Metropolitan Planning Organization area, where COG will be the leader of the transportation improvement program. They usually work with TaxDot districts, with the transit providers, with the general public to prepare their program. They have also the same deadline we do have here for Ruler TIP. By mid-July, they have to send everything down to Austin. For us here, we have conducted a meeting for Ruler Tip for Jack County. It was conducted earlier this, this week on Tuesday morning. This morning, we have conducted the Palo Pinto County public meeting earlier. And this afternoon, now, basically between 2 to 3, we are having the ERAT and Somerville counties meeting. Next, Sarah. 
This is again, I'm not going to go over this because we covered this on Tuesday, but this is kind of a format, the map. And this you can see legend here to the lower right for different colors and different numbers on these, on these projects shown. As you can see on the map, you see project locations and different colors corresponding to, to the fiscal year. Because we have an estimated delivery date for these projects by when we are expecting these projects to go to letting. So the red color goes in 21, and basically the blue color goes in 23. So you can look at those colors. Next, Sarah, I will run quick through those. This is the spreadsheet, like the projects, which are associated with the Jack County project, but I will skip those because I will get to the Erath County projects in a little bit. Let's move to the next slide, Sarah. This is what we covered this morning for Palo Pinto County map. As you see, the, the map is showing the different colors, different numbers on them, and uh, the legend for the, the lower right there on the screen, you can see basically the fiscal years, which is shown, which is an estimated date for project lettings during that time period. Next, please. Yeah, so this brings me into the, the, oh yeah, this is Palo Pinto County project, also in the same format. You see, I will, I'll spend more time on the Erath County and Somerville County project, but this is what we have covered earlier this morning for Palo Pinto. Let's move into Erath County map, Sarah, please. Okay, so this is the map we have. This is what I call a draft or a proposed projects to be included in the ruler tab for Erath County project. So as you can see there, the projects are shown on the map. And the map alone, because of the scale and, and the virtual meeting here, you cannot really see everything other than a color and a number there. The legend again is fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 24. Uh, I mentioned earlier tech that fiscal year starts every year by September 1st and ends by the end of August. So as of this coming September, there will be projects listed in this four years window. And let's look at the next spreadsheet Sarah for the projects. This is very quick. Let me help you out a little bit. It's a busy slide, but let me just try to explain it to you. If you start on the left, on the left side, where we have the number, these numbers are associated with the number shown on the map. So if you look at the number one here, go look at the map and you can see project number one, where it's located. But if you see, go from left to right, we have Construction section job. This is a kind of a social security number we use for every single project at TaxDot. So we have the roadways are divided to control section and then job. From job one to a thousand projects we do there. This is the CSGs. Basically, it helps us in in keeping those projects in a track uh, in TaxDot Connect system or using uh, its internal system we use at TaxDot. This is the planned fiscal year for letting the project. Letting a project means we go to construction in that fiscal year. Estimated lead date, this is giving you, giving you exactly the month and the year by when we are planning to lead that project as of now, as we know about the scope, the limits, the circumstances of the project. As you know, some of them are very pre preliminary in preparation for them, and some projects are very well developed. We have been working on them for a couple of years. But some of them are brand new. You go here, it gives you the county name, it gives you the highway name, set highway six here. It gives you like the project classification, like super two, when we add these auxiliary lanes on the two layer roadways to allow people to pass each other, you are passing a slow vehicle. And, and sometimes different type of work. There's a project description there. So you see the description. You see project limits in the next two columns from and to. The column before the last one, it's going to give you the construction cost estimate. Looks like this project is a huge, going to be $19 million or more. Now, literally, our estimated cost may be above or beyond, like could be 10, 15% over or less, but, but usually the closer we get to the project delivery, the more refinement and, and the cleaning up we do with these estimates. And look, it's very important to see the category for the funding. So if you see category number four there, this is where basically they call it regional connectivity category. This is where Texas Transportation Commission, they have to authorize project development process for tax dot statewide. And they're using the unified transportation program document. You go, I'm going to speak about that document. It's a 10 years document time frame. Right now we're working with fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 20. 
The last year document was fiscal year 22, fiscal year 2029. So mainly the category two, four, and the 12, usually they go through the approval process uh, by the Texas Transportation Commission. Now, the, the rest of the funding categories, let's look at the funding categories of the last column. You see the first two, category four, they are including the UTV. Category one is the Fort Worth district usually will have the responsibility in working with the locals and the area engineers and their staff to determine the needs and, and fund the projects under category one. So I call project selection will be conducted by the locals, tax dot, and and, uh, and the traveling public. Look at the category six for project number four on the list. This is a bridge. If you see funding category six, it means this is a bridge project. Then one, one is the same. Then you have category eight for project number seven. This is a safety project. So uh, traffic safety division in Austin, it's the entity within tax dot, it's a division within tax dot, uh, in Austin, they are responsible for managing the highway bridge program and the, the preventive maintenance rehab or replacement of bridges. But uh, number six, but but number eight, also the highway, the traffic operation division is responsible for selecting projects under category eight. So six is for the bridge, eight for traffic safety division, like I said, funding category. Now they work closely with us, but they are the ones who are responsible in managing the program statewide. Category one, again, the fourth world district. So you look at the list. This is where we need your comments on these projects. You may have comments on their scopes, their limits, their timing, or you may not want to know more about them. Can you tell me more about project X or Y? Some of them are very major, like the first one, there is like 19 million and nine, and some others, they are literally, they could be like 700,000 for that bridge on, on uh, number four. Again, those numbers are, associated with the links on the, the projects on the map. Funding category, I'm going to a little bit explain more, but I just want to prepare you in advance to look at your projects and you see the funding category categories. And so we have, we have one slide is dedicated to this discussion later on. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the rest of the projects here. As you can see, project number 11 and 12 on the top there, they have funding category six, they are bridges. Then you go category, uh, project number 13, 14, 15, they have category one. This is where the Fort Worth district, we are using usually the, the pavement score, the ride quality, the skid score, the different factors, the conditions of the pavement to determine the funding needs and, and to fund these projects for overlay projects or, or, or pavement repairs. And if you look at the final two projects, they're 16 and 17. They are, both of them are bridge projects. So it looks like you have a lot of bridge projects will be delivered. Now, again, before I move into the, 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 the next slide, just to let you know, these dates can, and they will change if we can add more value. You have comments on a project or a project is going to need right of way or utilities, or maybe we have issues with a consultant who's working on a project and we got delayed by a couple months, we'll be able to shift this letting date by, by a little bit. But, but the cost estimate also, I would say it's within 10 to 15% usually. When we come to the final construction plans, it can be actually as good as within five to 10%. But now I would say maybe it could be within 10 to 15% right now for, for the estimated cost. And so between now and mid July, when we get or hear back from you or area office, and sometimes literally we can hear from our area offices and and other, other employees at TaxDot, and we can actually modify these projects and respond to the comments and, and finalize the stuff and send it to Austin by mid-July. mid, mid uh, July. Next slide, Sarah. This is for Somerville County. One thing, I have a project for Somerville County, but we do have several studies are ongoing on 144 and 67, except at, at this moment, I don't have a project planned to let for construction within these four years window. We do have a project that are letting this August, a month before start of fiscal year. But if you need to know more about what's going on and other projects, I know I have Sarah Horner, the assistant area engineer or something. She gave me a long list of different ongoing studies. If it was like a drainage study or feasibility study on 144 or, or uh, 67 uh, on Highway 67 project. If the project is not located today within the four years window, uh, or if it's not fully funded, 
because the, the purpose of the ruler tip is to present to you the projects is, the projects within these counties which the department can deliver within the four years window based on the availability of resources and funding and and basically based on a priority system now if we are doing a study and then that study lead us to have a project and and that project can be prepared and delivered within the four years window i will show you how we can add that project to the list as part of what we call the tip revision or step revision or what we call it ruler tip in our case here but i'll show you that later next sarah please yeah, this is the project we showed. It's funded by Category 1. It's an overlay project on FM51. But like I said, we have about at least four to six other projects we are working on, except I'm not sure yet if we're going to deliver them in this four years window. But when we get this information, finish these studies, we probably can schedule more projects within Somerville County. Next slide, please, sir. Okay. I know it's... it's <laughs> It's a complicated slide, but I like it because it kind of explains the process for project selection and development at TechDoc. This is what happens with us, starting from left, going to the right side. You really have to have a need. We have to respond to a need before you can plan and program a project. And that need can be identified by traveling public, by the local governments, by the county, by the cities, by the area offices, by TechDoc by literally anybody who's passing by a truck driver there, noticing that there is no enough shoulder to stop or something, we can give these comments and notices. So TechDOT, local entities and stakeholders, stakeholders is just covering every single base on literally anybody who can benefit from these projects or drive these roadways can give us comments about needs in these areas. Then the project selection responsibility now, it lies with, we have TechDOT districts, including area offices. We have the local government in both urbanized areas or rural areas. We have Texas Transportation Commission. I just mentioned early, earlier the Unified Transportation Program and that funding category 2, 4, and 12 literally get authorized by the commission. Now, the rest of funding for the other categories is going to be included always in the CUTB document, but they will not basically dictate every project and every limit and everything. They give that flexibility to uh, to the districts and to the divisions in Austin, to different entities. But category two, four, and twelve, usually they have to go through the process of the unified transportation program by the commission, and usually it gets approved by the last commission meeting in in August. Then when you have now this is TTC Texas Transportation Commission, like I said the UTB. Then you have Council of Government for Urbanized Areas. Some other parts of the state, they could have regional planning organization in rural areas. I know one time Jack County, they told me they were part of a rural uh, transportation, basically planning, uh, like not council, but not urbanized area, but a rural, like a planning commission in rural area they associate with, I think in Wichita Falls. So some areas, they have those council of governments also in rural areas. And then the public transit provider. So TexDOT and the MBO usually, and the rural area, if there is any transit in which is servicing the area, it's good to communicate with them and let them know that we have this process. So if they need any projects to be basically requested or submitted under the step. Now, after you know the needs and you got the projects and you know who's responsible for what, we have to determine the funding strategy. Like different colors of money. So if you know your needs, which usually our needs is far exceeding actually the available funding to fund these projects, you look at the funding strategy. Funding strategy most likely is going to be involving federal dollars, state dollars, and local dollars. The, the rest of the, the boxes there, the toll did pass through financing or others. Text that we were using these back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, five years ago, at this time, at least since 2015, we stopped using any toll project, any pass through financing, and TechDOT did not issue any bid to, to build toll roads or anything. They issued it for State Highway 130 in Austin and all the way from Georgetown to Austin and, and, and other places where TechDOT is servicing the bid uh, and the revenues come back to TechDOT. And there was a private toll before, but like I said, right now, 
TextDot will not be using any tooling tools in, in the current time, in the current environment we have. Uh, but I included them just for illustration purposes because we have used them in the past. Planning process again. This is why we are here today. So all the, the first three columns there to the left, they, they give you the background introduction for the planning process. So we have a statewide long-range transportation plans. We have metropolitan transportation plan done at the urbanized level of our district, led by the Council of Governments. We have the unified transportation program. The next, now the first block there, it's really dealing with the 20 plus, 20 to 25 plus years. You have to have always approved long range plan, which has a time horizon at least 20 plus years. Theory, because text up now we're working on the 2050 plan. It should be approved by the fall of this year. And COG, they have any place right now approved the 2045. And in the next three months, they will be starting the amendment process for the existing plan to, to update it or really I mean, the, the current plan. The UTP, like I said, the last year one was 2020 UTP covering up to 2029. It's 10 years time horizon. And, and basically the current one we're working from right now, it's 2021. It's coming up. It should be approved by this coming August by the commission. So still a draft project is not finalized yet. The step and tip, like I said, now we are working on the 21 through 24. And these meetings are part of the public involvement process for the ruler TIB, basically. And the TIB here, COG, the Council of Government, are working on their document, and they have public involvement as we speak, like this, the last week and these coming weeks, they're going to go to the RTC for its approval. And their deadline also is mid-July to send it to Austin. Now, coming to the right there, development process and project construction. This is where the shift of the responsibility in this project comes from Austin, the commission, the, the, our administration, myself and my team as a planning team, to our area offices. We have our David Fowler, he's the area engineer uh, in Stephenville. We have uh, Sarah Horner and, 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 and Jerry Hunter and others, which they are really leading the process of what we call a project development process at TechDoc. By the way, if you see those blocks, they are detailed, but we have usually, like we do planning work, we do the, we have to comply with the National Environmental Policy Act in conducting environmental studies. And those studies, usually you have to evaluate the impacts of your transportation project on man-made and human environment. So you could prepare different type of documents. It depends on basically the significance of the impact we are having. If you have additional lanes and widening of a roadway, it has, it's going to have more impact than having expanding of, of a shoulder or, or have a rumble strip uh, at the edge line or the center uh, line or stuff like this. Then you have to conduct public involvement. Some projects, they could be very minor, like an overlay. So a discussion with the area engineer, a phone call with their staff, it could be sufficient. But if we have a major project like 281 and expanding, sometimes you have to do a public involvement study like the 144 in, in Somerville County. We did have public meetings. And so there is public involvement meeting for the project specific. I'm doing it now today for the program at large for the whole ruler meeting. But when we have a project, they will do public involvement as part of the environmental study and the planning study for the project. Major projects usually required us to prepare a preliminary design of what we call the schematics the number of lanes, the layouts, the geometrics of the roadway. And, and then by then we will know if we are going to be acquiring right of way for the project. Are we going to move utilities out of the way? Are we going to basically have to change certain things? So, so at that time, right of way is going to take some time to do the right of way acquisitions or if we need an easement. And also if we need to move utilities out of the way, so out of the way. So all these factors in the project development is going to shape the readiness of these projects and when, when we can actually deliver the project. So what I'm giving you today is a draft, is an estimate, our best estimate today. But literally in two months from now, I may get in comments from the area office or your guys to tell me, no, no, this project, can this be delayed? Can, can this be moved up? And, and if the parties are okay with it, we can actually move a projects back back and forth within the four years window. 
And when you finish the project development, basically the final product of the project development process is what we call PSNE, which is a plans, specifications, and estimates which is basically the construction plan, which will be sending to Austin for letting. Letting can be happening at the Austin level or at the local level, local let projects or state let projects. This which will bring me finally to the final construction column there. This is the construction really is fully is the responsibility of our area office. They will be doing the inspection, the construction management and oversight of project construction usually three months, four months after letting date of VC projects, they will be going under construction. And, and, and TechDOT will be trying to get and procure the best contractor we can get based on the lowest price and basically capable, uh, as long as, as the contractor is capable and uh, responsible to be able to deliver this work, they have to be qualified usually. And then the project construction starts with the area office. And like I said, it could take a year or it could take four years to build a major project. If you have a long stretch of a roadway, it may take longer time. And then we close the project and we look at the final out of that project. So literally, this is, I know it took me four minutes to cover this, but more or, more or less, this is kind of the project selection and development process at Texas statewide. Next, sir. This is my favorite funding category. Some of you probably did not like it, but here are the categories, one, two, all the way to 12. By the way, Sarah, can you see my cursor if I bounce on the slide? I'm no. asking, uh, can you see the cursor if I move it on the slide there? No, I cannot. Okay, no. So, okay, on your left, the funding category, 1 through 12, this is what we talked about. 1 is the responsibility of poor, poor district. 11 also, you see category 11, the responsibility of the district. And there is a description of the type of work is done by this category, like a preventive maintenance and rehab for CAT 1. Category 2, it's done for the metropolitan uh, area, urban area corridors. Category 3, usually non-traditional projects or local funding. Category 4, I showed you earlier, it's a statewide connectivity corridor. It goes through the commission. You see, based on the commission, basically, they are the Project selection responsibility lies with the TTC, the Texas Transportation Commission. And you keep going down, category six, the bridges. It's really, it's, it's, it's the, the it's a bridge division in Austin. They are responsible for the project selection and management of the program. And here you look at category eight, safety. It's, uh, it's basically the commission, but usually we are all working for the commission at TechDOT. That's the traffic safety division will be the lead entity or division for safety projects. And you keep going down all the way. Category 12, the strategic priority usually is the commission. Now look at the far right under funding participation. Usually it's 80-20 for the majority of our highway projects. 80% of the funding will be federal participation. 20% will be state or local or both. So we could have 10% state, 10% local to match the 80% the, uh, federal funding. Except if I just want you to pay attention for category six, the bridge, it could be 90 and 10. 90 and 10 state on system or off system here sometimes, 90 and 10% is the local. You can see also from the category eight safety where you have also 90 and 10. So FSWA, where you have safety issues is involved, like bridges and, and, and safety, the participation goes up to 90%. So this is really the funding participation, the project selection responsibility, the description of the categories and the categories, what's happening here from 1 to 12. So this is enough for you guys to get dangerous in looking at the UTB document and you see how much money the commission will be allocating for us. Like category 1 and 11, I know, we get in total of 90 million a year to fund category one and 11. The, the rest of the funding categories, they are really, there is a number allocated statewide. And so our district may get different number every single year. Next slide, please. This is again, the planning process. I probably explained it before, and I will show you here in, in, in this graph here in illustration. This is where you start with 25 years statewide long range transportation plan. They are working today on the 2050. I can tell you it's not approved yet. The, the, the previous one was 2040. 
I was told that 2050 should be ready and approved this year, before the end of this year also. Then you have the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. It's also the current approved one is the 2045 plan, but it's in the process being updated. It takes a couple of years to update the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. And then basically you have the 10 years, the Unified Transportation Program or a plan, some people call it. It's a 10 years document. It's required under Texas Administrative Code by the commission basically uh, to, to prepare it and approve it every single year. So tax dot offices and districts will work with the commission and transportation planning a division in Austin to, to be able to prepare. And we are really right now in the final stages of the fiscal year 21 through fiscal year 30 Unified the Transportation Program. This is mainly category two, four, and the 12, and the program allocation for other funding categories. So how much money they will be allocating within the upcoming 10 years window to the different funding category, basically. And if you see at the bottom there, the statewide transportation improvement program, the four years, we call this is a short term program. Literally four years is not very long time in terms of transportation and the project development. And then we have one to two years letting schedule. So by the time we enter a project in letting schedule, we kind of have maybe 60, 70% sure that we can let that project within a couple of years. And when we come closer, probably we can bring it up to 90% confidence. But within the four years window, really, projects could be moved up and down within the four years window. So, so this is mainly how, how basically what we are doing today as the ruler tip, like I said, it's a component of the statewide transportation improvement program. It's going to be the ruler tip and the urban tip. They get together to form the statewide transportation improvement program to go to the FHWA at the end. And this is how it fits with the process other other planning documents which get kind of prepared at tax dot. One thing to add for you under that wallet where we say other tax dot planning documents, we have different modes uh, over transportation and we have a plan. We have a strategic highway safety plan at tax dot. We have rail plan, we have a freight plan, we have so literally there is a lot of other documents and the plans. I just to summarize here, this is what we can share with you within an hour meeting here. Next Sarah. This is again, again, the plans and the programs on the upper portion of the slide. You can see statewide long range transportation plan, 25 plus years. In the box inside, there is the metropolitan transportation plan and the transportation improvement program in the urbanized area. You see it's surrounded by this big dotted box there. This is a stance for the conformity process, basically, because we are in non-attainment area for ozone in the COG area. So then there is a federal action. We have to prove what we call conformity, which means all the projects are planned to be developed within the four years window in the TIP or the long range transportation plan, they must help us meet air quality within the area. And that air quality conformity plan usually TCEQ prepare state implementation plan statewide, and they will have a transportation control measures there so we have to comply with this transportation control measure in the urbanized area. In the rural area, we don't have the air quality issues or problems, so we don't have to subject what we do to, to conformity, basically, in outside the urbanized area. Then there will be the federal action for the state. All these projects, when they go to the state in the fall, the Fed will be able, FHWA and FTA, they will be able to review all the, the documentation, the financial summary, the project listing, and I will mention earlier, later on, group the projects. Not every single project will be listed individually in the state document. Other projects may be listed as a group of projects. I'll talk about this later. Then you have the UTB, the midterm document. It's a 10 years document. The lower portion of the slide, as you can see, it's covering the project development process I just explained in a different slide before. You do the design work, you do the environmental work here. And I said federal action since the 2014 tax dot been having authority, what they call they delegated the authority FHWA to tax dot to approve CEs, categorical exclusion environmental document. This is the simplest documents we have. And EAs, environmental assessment documents, it's going to be approved at the district level or at the division level in Austin. 
Uh, environmental impact statement, there is some more involvement still to, to the field on that. But the other two documents got delegated to, to, to the state and to the district. If there is right of way acquisition and all of this stuff, you have to do this after you get your environmental clearance. You do right of way acquisition. You finalize your construction plan because anytime you deal with right of way and utilities, you may have to redesign your projects to minimize the impact. And if you can even eliminate it, then it's going to go maybe smoother and better. But you try to minimize the impact of your project on, on, uh, on, on uh, property owners, on, on additional right of way, on utilities, and you finalize your plans and you go to letting. The only thing letting means when the final construction plan go to construction, go to, goes to Austin for a monthly letting. Uh, like we have a, a letting schedule every month, like Tuesdays and Thursdays at the start of every month where we let several projects statewide. And six weeks before the letting, six to eight weeks, usually tax that will be requesting to obligate the funds. Fund obligation means we are requesting a letter called FPAA, Federal Project Authorization and Agreement, which is basically the federal government commitment to assist the state in delivering that project. So financial, they will say, now we are putting the money aside, 80% of the fund you are going to ask us for. When you build the project and you submit an invoice, hopefully that everything included in the invoice is eligible for federal funding and everything is okay, then FSWA can reimburse us with 80% of the funding and the 20% will be used from the local match and the state match. It depends on the matching. So again, this is describing the programs, the projects, at the same time at the project development level when you have a project. Next, please, sir. This is, by the way, how you can add a project. Like when I mentioned Somerville County, if we have some of those studies we are working on, if they lead to a project and construction a project, and that project can actually be included within four years window to let, then we can go and amend that Basically, we call revision date, as you can see, there is four times a year in November 2020, February 21, May 21, August 21, looking from your left to right under their upcoming revision dates. And we can literally include any new project into the tip and step. So this is step we're working on today. It's, it's every two years, basically every other year, we'll come back and prepare it. Hopefully next time by 2022, We'll be able to do it in person. If not, we probably will, will be better with these virtual public involvement meetings and, and we'll do them virtually, but hopefully we'll be able to do them in, in person. They get updated. So again, there is a process how to change the step, and this is the days for it. The next few slides really for illustration purposes. Let's move into next slide, Sarah. This is how the process, how you amend the step basically. It has to be consistent with the long range plan. It has to be in the urbanized areas has to be approved by the council, uh, regional council of Prague, their po policy board. And we have to use a system called E-STEP. You can see it in the third bullet there. Uh, my team will be submitting it to Austin. FHWA will be able to review it and look at it. If they are okay with it, FHWA and FTA will be saying it's approved. If not, but the process sometimes it may take anywhere from three to six months of process to get approved, it depends on the change we are requesting. Is it major or minor? I will define major and minor shortly here. So to receive the federal action on all these projects, the projects must be consistent with the long range plan, the UTV, and the environmental document to prepare for that specific project. So sometimes we have environmental commitments or mitigations. Or, so we have to comply with all these planning and environmental documents. And like I said, Usually, FHWFTA will be approving all that amendment if it's major. Let, let's go to the next slide, Sarah. This is slides giving you a definition. This is what we call the major changes in the state, which we may have to have public involvement. We may have to have basically approval of FHWA and others in conducting them. When you're adding projects federally funded, but was not on the list before. If you add regionally significant project with state funding, but because it's a non-attainment area and urbanized area, you have to have major revision, what we call a step revision. A change in the project limits, change from state funding to federal funding for projects. Next, Sarah, this is all what we call breaking a business rule, so means 
This is where if you have the project cost estimate goes above a million and a half, and the increase from the initial cost, if you see in the lower portion of the slide, if the initial cost was like 800, became 1.45 million, basically less than one and a half, you don't have to have amendment for the step. Why? Because it's below 50%. The, the, the increase is, uh, is above 50%, but the cost is below one and a half million. So in order to have an amendment, the cost estimate, the new revised cost must be exceeding 1.5 million. And also the, the percent increase from the initial cost has to be over 50%. I know we have these six, seven cases for you to look at, six cases. But you can see what's happening there. One case saying yes, one case no. It depends on the increase and the growth and the cost. So then you have to do a major amendment for this. Next, Sarah. Again, like I said, step can be revised, updated, and, 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 and to make it consistent with the long range plans and the UTB. So as you can see, criteria for step is coming to us from the commission, Texas Transportation Commission will be approving the Unified Transportation Program. If they are coming up with new changes in the upcoming UTB, next year we'll be able to amend and modify whatever we need to modify in order to make it consistent with the structure, the UTB structure and the funding categories included in the UTB. Next, please, Sarah. Yeah, this is where we call changes that do not require step revision. You really, can do it administratively. You don't really have to do a major public involvement, and except we always encourage our area office to reach out to the communities and communicate this. You are changing the CSJ, like I said, the social security for a project. Uh, changing a CSJ or, or basically change in estimated cost for federal cost, but it's less than a million and a half. You don't have really to go out to the Fed and say it's, it's not a huge change. Change in letting date if you move it from 22 to 23 or move it up or delay a project within the four years window, it does not require you a major change. And then any change in state funding category to another state funding category. I used category one and 11 example earlier. We can shift funding categories between the projects all the time. We don't have to do a major revision. It can be done administratively. Next please, Sarah. This is also continuation of the same administrative changes, change uh, in project limited state funded, change in tip year, like I said, 22 to 24, 23, project scope for state funded projects, change in one federal funding category to another federal. If it was already there, the project is funded by federal dollars, but we shifted the funding category from one funding category to another, you still can do it administratively. Uh, addition of a project to a statewide program. And I'll mention this in a little bit about the group, the projects. Next, Sarah, please. This is very much what I said earlier. We encourage because they are done administratively and we will not come to the community to conduct public involvement every time we change a letting date on a project, but we do encourage our area offices and the district staff to reach out to the community to make sure that all the transportation partners are kept in the loop in changing that letting date. So, if we delay a project significantly by a year or two. Or, so usually our area office, they work with the community on, on daily basis. And, and so a phone call can be really sufficient to communicate the change. And then when you do these administrative changes, they're going to lead like any changes in the scope, going to lead to change in maybe the cost estimate, which means it's going to impact the financial summary, which goes hand in hand with the step. Therefore, we don't have to update the step if we do administrative change, but the next time we do the amendment or the update, we must reflect the new reality of the, the, new, the new financial implications of that change we have done. Because this is step, again, it has to be financially constrained. You cannot spend more than what you have within the four years window. So the whole four years window, they are developed based on matching our needs with the available funding. This is why we call it prioritized project. And this is what's the really classic definition of programming process. You look at all needs, you look at the available funding and you match them and you include what you can deliver within four years window in the step. Next, please. This explained to you again, not to panic again, this is where 
You may not see your projects I have listed on this spreadsheet, me and my team listed on the spreadsheet and the map. You may not see it individually listed in the statewide document because we can group a lot of projects under one CSJ statewide. Let's look at the next one, except if you are in non-attainment area and you're adding capacity projects, then basically at that time, you have to include the project individually in the TIB, in the, uh, in the urbanized area. But in our case here, no, as you can see here, this is literally the last portion of my presentation. You look on the left and you're going to see group the projects, which is a definition of a group the project up on the top. You see different CSJs on the left, like 5,000, 00950. We use it for a statewide project for conducting preliminary engineering work. This is the definition of which type of work we can do under that definition under that CSG. So your project, if we do preliminary engineering, like feasibility study for 144, or in the past, some of these projects were programmed in our system as like feasibility study under, under this type of code. Right of way has the other code, which is the difference of 951 instead of 950 there. And you keep going down the list, the preventive maintenance. This is what we call a group to project, which means that the project does not have a huge significant impact. It's not added capacity. So it can be programmed as a group with other projects statewide under these project CSJ. This is literally the definitions we have here. And you have safety down there, landscaping, intelligent transportation system. The next slide, please, sir. This is the bicycle and, and pedestrian facilities, safe tourist areas, and transit projects. All these projects usually can be grouped. Now, again, some situation I've seen projects, somebody comes and says, then when we look at the project more, we see it's a little bit added capacity or added lane. So these kind of projects cannot be grouped. But if it's as you can see below, if you have uh, transportation alternatives, program projects or transportation enhancement or CMAC, usually, like I know David Father, he's the area engineer for HUD, Somerville, and ERAD. In HUD County, for example, if you can use CMAC money, category five, for air quality. So if you spend money under that program, you have to individually list the project. This is just a clarification but we usually don't have CMAC money outside the urbanized area. Okay, Sarah, next. Again, this is bringing me to, my, to the end of my formal presentation here. This is where you can go to the website and access our documents like the maps and the project listing. You can send us your comments by May 25th. As you can see, you can either mail us on text that address there under item one, item two, you can email me this electronically and and you go to the website and you'll be able to find all these uh, form and information and please 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 send me all of these documentation and and comments by may 25th 2020 because this is officially 10 days from today's meeting so we can actually uh, start addressing these comments and work toward our deadline by mid-july we probably may reach out to the public to the locals regarding some question or comments but we will finalize the program by mid-July and submit through ESTIB system we have at TechsDot for the review and approval of FHWA and, and FTA. But before it goes there, it goes through public involvement process at basically at the divisions down in Austin for public meetings and hearing for the, the STIP document. Next, Sarah, please. This is very quick, the contact information for our area engineer. So in your case here, the third one, David Fowler, this is his office location. It's in Stephenville, and this is the email, and this is the phone number if you need to reach out to David to ask him about any specific project, what's going on there. But please, for comments regarding this meeting and regarding, to, regarding this public involvement, feel free to send me this to, to myself, to my email, or to, to text that website, please, AI. I'm sorry, to text that address. So. We need those things to write. The next slide, please, Sarah. This is exactly what we have covered today. We'll be concluding the public involvement process for our ruler tip for our district. We have done Jack County on Tuesday. We have completed Erath County uh, meeting earlier this morning. And we are doing this Somerville and Palabinto County now. This is basically the last slide in my presentation. 
Now, this is literally, I call it the beginning of the process in getting comments and feedback and everything else. So the end of the meeting is not the end of the process, is the start of receiving comments, the review and evaluation of these comments. Every single comment will be considered and evaluated. And this is just a reminder of the materials which you're guys going to be able to find on the website, the list of the planned and programmed projects, which is literally the slides I have shown before. The map showing project locations and limits, the PowerPoint presentation before the end of tomorrow, they should be out there hopefully today maybe, but, but we are shooting for the end of, of, of the day tomorrow to have all this information posted to our website. And please, your comments again, another reminder that they are due back by May 25th. So this is all what I have here. Uh, I'm glad that you guys were able to be patient with me and spending about an hour plus with me listening to this formal presentation. Uh, and we really like your, your really reaching out and providing comments if you have any, if you don't have any comments. Thank you for participating in this process. And, and we really believe that, that the public involvement will add value to our programs and our plans because, you know, we'll discover issues early on. You bring up something now in a project and we can fix it, guess what? Me and my team, we will, we will not need to change it down the road a year or two down the road. Or if we discover the correct scope, we can do a better estimate. So I would love to discover things in the next couple of months before we submit the stuff to Austin and then next year I have to deal with it again and again. So thank you again. Again, my name is Mohammed, and I'm with TechDot Advanced Transportation Planning Section. Back to you, Sarah, to see if we have anything got in the chat. If there's any question or any comment, I can address very quick. Otherwise, probably this meeting will be adjourned immediately. Um, we have a comment from Manara Tamarissa. Um, yeah. He's just asking for clarification on what we're looking for in terms of comments. Yeah, any comments, like we have listed the projects. Manara, so we have listed the project, we have a split sheet. We have two of them for ERAF, one for Somerville. We have also the maps. He could look at the map and discover that, you know, we did not have the correct limit on the map. Or he can basically look at the project and say, actually, the description should be a little bit different. Or he could be saying, you know what, the funding category, is that correct? Or they could say, basically, why this project is letting. So any comments regarding to what I call the draft program, which we have shared with the community today. This program is not perfect. We have worked with the area office very hard and our director of TBND and the administration to look at our funding and our projects and our needs. And we plan for conducting this kind of public involvement to start getting these comments. So literally anything and everything, or we could have comments on a project. You know, I wish I can improve this project here. We can get a comment like this and we can look at it and evaluate and respond to it. So, so there's no limitation on which kind of comments we need to, to ask for, but mainly look at the spreadsheets of the Palabento County or, or the other, other offices. We, we covered Jack and Palabento before. Or you look at the map. So anything like this, we can basically add value to our map and our project list and our estimate and our scope and everything else if we have to fix anything. So this is examples of the comments would like to welcome if anybody can see anything we did not do. And, and if you think we have done a good job in this, maybe you say thank you and we are supporting what you guys are doing and you are making a difference. And so either way, I mean, I'm not trying to do marketing here, but literally we can get any comments you guys can come up with here. And thanks for the comment. Is there anything else there? Uh, Minar also has asked, um, can I get the spreadsheet or can I download? Yeah, he can get it from the website based on the addresses, the presentation, all the materials will be included basically on the website. Okay, that is all of the chat and question and answers we have. Thank you all for being part of, of this process and listening to us. We have spent about almost an hour and 10 minutes here almost, but, but I'm glad we we're able to go through this material and explain this to you. And thank you all. And this meeting is adjourned. Thanks. Bye. So Sarah, you can stop recording and end this WebEx for this okay. process. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.